Well, good morning, everyone. Don Kramer with the Kramer Group at Urban Nest Realty. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And look who I found over the interwebs. I partner in all real estate matters, Ms. Colleen Schaefer. Welcome, Colleen. Good morning. How are you today? See, you know, sometimes you invite somebody in and you can't get rid of them. No, I can't. They find and a way back in. <laughs> are the last person I'm getting rid of. <laughs> Glad to be here. Glad Ab to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yesterday we were uh, meeting a plenty with some listing stuffs and all that good stuff. A lot of planning for uh, the summer months because summer is going to be an interesting housing market uh, here in Las Vegas. But we're here with the stats for May. So kind of want to get. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting because you speak of our meeting from yesterday. Yep. And I'm, I'm when I look, I'm looking at my computer with the stats. Um, it was an interesting meeting because there's a lot happening. Um, the stats kind of show downward, but we're feeling an upward. Do you know what I mean? Which I'm sure we'll get into with these numbers, but things are still moving. Things are still happening. Exactly. And I guess if I were to say it, you know, they're saying, well, the housing market's down. Well, yeah, there there's some lower levels of inventory. It's kind of like when you when you order a, as you know, you know me. I'm 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 Mr. Analogy. It's like when you order a salad at a restaurant, but you want the lunch portion. It's just a right. little bit smaller. But it's still good. Still good. And there's plenty of people wanting it. There's stuff all all, all on it. <laughs> but And just, plenty of people are looking for it. And people you know are looking I mean? for. It. People are asking for the mm -hmm. lunch portion. So May yeah. is kind of a continuation of the lunch portion of the real estate market. Right. I agree. <laughs> I agree. So get through numbers, but it was, it was, um, well, to me, it was good news. I mean, I understand a little bit of a dip. Um, I expected, I'm just pleasantly surprised at the trend. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's kind of go into the first slide here, which is the May home sales. Uh, so I've got the slide up that's kind of comparing May to April and May of last year. Yeah. So in the month of May, we sold 1,703 single family homes. Now that is a drop from the April 2020 number. And I think April 2020 of this year was still because we had some demand, probably a little longer escrows from May, from March. So, you know, May kind of still showing the after effects of a, of a full month of shutdown. I think showing that lower sale volume and then, you know, granted much lower sale volume than May of 2019 with where we, where we sold 3,281 homes last year. Right. Yeah. I was looking at that and I was like, okay, okay. Um, we, we definitely had a little bit of breaks on once, once this virus, um, hit, you know, started the effect started to show. Yep. Um, but I look, I do look at March and, and I hear you on that. If you look at February, and March, and then April, some of March came over from February, I'm guessing, but March and April, the, the higher in March actually than I thought it would be because of the shutdown. I think April was when we had the, the hit of, okay, that's, that's a full 30 days, 45 days of just the activity was stopped. I mean, there were still people that were virtually searching. Right. Correct. I mean, yeah. still had people that said we, we, we all we need to do is see the house. But for the most part, I think that's the difference. And we, we really kind of started seeing the uptrend in houses going into escrow again, sort of like climbing back up from the drop, sort of like second, third week of April. Yep. So if you think about it, you know, those, those when things started picking back up, those were most likely May closings. Yeah, very much so. So. Uh, but right, so I think, uh, and when you look at that and go, well, okay, 1703. I look at a January, uh, almost a year and a half ago, January of 2019, you know, that was 1830. So, you know, it, it's, it's just a slower, you know, we, with COVID and full shutdown for the month, it's just a slower period. We just had slower volume. Yes, because again, you look at January of 19. Yep. At the numbers 1830, you look at January of 2020, we were up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we were on we were on the we were on the rise. February, and, we were up. Yep. 
in so, March. So we've got the downward trend in home sales. However, interestingly enough, was the median price. Yeah. So our median price, which we dropped from our March number to April from 319 to 310, we bounced back to 315. So we're, it looks like we're kind of playing in this window, Colleen, of between sort of the 310 to 319 period. And that May number, even though we had a lower volume, is still significantly up from May a year ago. And that, again, is where you go, okay, we didn't tank by any stretch no. we had little bruise but that's all it is nothing's broken nothing's you know what i mean it, it was a, a sprain okay all right all right all right i'll give you a sprain but we're still able to move yeah <laughs> and we, we can really take off the well, we got rid of the bubble cast or whatever those things are so you know what i mean with those air cast things oh yeah. that's right yeah because things seem to be back up again as far as the median price picked up again Exactly. So the lower inventory, Colleen, I mean, on well, that's, I think, where we're going to dive into the next. I mean, while home sales were down, when we look at what we had in new listings coming on, which, again, we didn't have as many homes come on in May of this year as we did uh, last year. However, it was a bounce up upwards from April. So we do have people interested in selling their homes. So we went, rebounded from our low of 2630 new listings in April to 3231. But that's still off of our kind of like our selling season high windows, which are more in the mm -hmm. four thousand, you know, upper 4000 range. Yes. Yes. We did see an increase. That's the way the market usually goes yep. at this time of year. So that to me was a good positive, um, indicator we still saw an upward swing in may which is good yeah absolutely absolutely however i think you know as is uh you and i chatted too i mean when we look at the total home sales you know this month in the month of may homes for sale was 57.99 versus a year ago 78.55 so you know 26 a little over 26 percent down from last year and 16.8% down from April of this year. So our inventory, num our total inventory number continues to take a bit of a downtrend, which, you know, I, I'd like to say it's kind of a COVID situation, but we were seeing some downtrends in inventory, you know, not enough inventory coming online even before COVID. Oh, before COVID, we were talking about that. Remember, it was a seller's market. Yep. So, and, and, Actually, our experience, correct me if I'm wrong, Don, but in the last month, the homes that we have listed and put under contract mm -hmm. have not sat there very long. There have been multiple people, multiple offers. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's the market of, oh my gosh, you know, you've got, you've got to put out highest and best, but I'm going to say priced right. And it wasn't like fire sale priced right. so far. They've all appraised for at or above value mm -hmm. um they're not sitting there nope so those numbers i still like those numbers because what little we do have it comp comparatively relatively to, to last year it, it's it's still moving right absolutely yeah. yeah i mean the market's still moving although you know the the trend line c continues to look at we're not quite adding enough homes to the market as we're seeing demand continuing to rebound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, it's not like we're looking for a surge. We're just looking to sort of keep that in pace because I think if we keep that in pace, we can keep that median home price in a more balanced situation, sort of between that 310 to 319 peer price range. Mm -hmm. We'd hate to see a, a dry up of inventory and then see a spike to, let's say, 325. Although some sellers might say, well, why not? I said, well, that kind of leads to an unhealthy market. Right. right. No, no. If we can stay, as we've stayed COVID safe here, yes. and we've managed to keep our numbers and, and our curve where we want it, I think that real estate, if we can keep that curve the way we want it, we'll, we'll stay safe. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think if you look at, you know, when we got the next couple of slides here, 
where we talk about days on market, month supply and days on market, you know, for single family homes, we're still bubbling right around the three month supply. So we, even with COVID and mm -hmm. lockdowns and shutdowns, we never saw a spike in inventory and, de and demand go to such where nobody was buying houses. There were enough people buying houses for the amount of houses we had for sale. Mm -hmm. That's that curve. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, 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 to me, I'm thrilled because it's a safe way that we've gone through this. It's a, it's a healthy way. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And if we look at uh, two days on market, uh, you know, we're, we're average, you know, the average home is roughly 44 days, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is, you know, just, uh, just, a, just above a smidge above six weeks, which isn't bad. By well, any John, of the do, you, do you remember the market when there were so many houses out there, it took 45 days to close. So when you're looking at, you know, 30 to 45 days, yep. a lot of that is just a normal um, healthy cycle of, of time that, yep. you know, you put it out there, people see it, it goes under contract. Right. So especially with how, how creative we had to get to show houses. Yes. Yeah. And we definitely, we had to, we had to move into a different situation showing uh, properties, especially while well, tenant occupied, as you know, was restricted. Owner occupied became a much more, um, I wouldn't say limited task, but you know, more, more requirements. And then, as you know, we started doing virtual showing. So, you know, the ability to serve up properties to people that, and also to stay a lot of stay at home. There's a lot of people that weren't willing to uh, venture out to go look at properties unless they were could do it through the comfort of their own home. And nor should we have. Yeah, I, you know, I think that was. So I'm I'm happy with the numbers. We'll go back. We'll we'll have conversations on another day. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I also I've got a couple other slides because I like to, you know, you know us, you know me and me and the numbers thing. We like to take a little deep dive, even by yeah. price point. So. You look at uh, homes, you know, our core market on closed sales and active listings, that 250 to 500,000 range, you know, that's mm -hmm. still moving pretty healthy. And two, when you start getting above 500,000, sort of that mid luxury to luxury segments, you, those houses, you know, again, we don't have that much that many listings in relation, but they're keeping pace with the number of closed sales. Yeah, there isn't a great disparate, uh, difference between the two. And as far as if you take those numbers, like you said, you do numbers and yep. there's nothing unhealthy in, in any of the markets as far as like a red flag. No, I don't. no. And then too, you know, we've got this other slide here, sort of days on market. And I think that sort of tells the right right tail where you go okay well when we look at may this year versus may of last year days on market the core market segments actually showed really good you know great resilience that 250 to 500,000 range houses were on the market less this year than they were last year mm -hmm. then as we got you know back up into the five to seven it's kind of about close and then the, the the upper you know you know mid mid executive styles to to luxury segments yeah those just those are just a long just a longer cycle right now but not 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 anything I would be uh, terribly alarmed about no and I don't you think I mean I'm not alarmed with it and secondarily as we get into and our market is different than many markets our price ranges are different than many markets but when you look at any kind of median price and their go forward i don't care what the number is um the higher numbers don't usually fly off the shelves as quickly as because more people can afford or are looking for the the smaller to middle and so i would expect in in a situation that we had that the larger ones would slow down yeah and we're not like a market like southern california where you know we have so much inventory plus a million dollars i mean yes we have a decent selection of a million dollar inventory but then when you start getting you know, really when you start getting above above the two and a half three million dollar range 
are in, we don't have a lot of housing choices. <laughs> There's not a lot there. I mean, there isn't. We well, both of you and I know exactly where we need to go to find them. It's like, oh, go there or go there. That's yeah, it. Yeah, there and there. That's yep, about it. Pretty much. That's what we've got. <laughs> and uh, so, and then too, I think there was that period where you know that that type of seller, they weren't bringing a lot of houses online. So I don't think it really. It, we don't really see signs of that market, the luxury market collapsing because we're seeing some demand pick up. But they kind of took the hey, we'll wait on the sidelines and just kind of see what happens. Pretty much. Yeah. Which is expected. Because I mean, then for better or worse, they, they can afford to say, okay, you know what? Hey, I know my house is going to take 200, 300 days possibly to sell, especially that upper, you know, that above 2 million price range. So, you know, two or three months, I mean, how, how does that really impact you throughout the, throughout this whole thing? There, yeah. Yeah. There isn't any a sense of urgency on that one. <laughs> exactly. So one thing, and I don't think you have the printout, Colleen, but I did pull up this. There's a slide here from Showing Time. So so people know Showing Time is uh, one of the leading applications that track property showings. And I think this is a good indicator. So we're not looking too much too much back in history. And they were running the an impact on showings by state from COVID-19. So if you look at it, you know, back in uh, March, you know, March 2020, we were we were above above uh, our seven day moving average out of the year. And then we sort of collapsed uh, through mid to late March, all the way to the third week of April, but sort of the, you know, from the third week of April on, we started pushing, you know, searching for properties and scheduling showings continued on an upward path to where now in May through May, our percentage of showings were up compared to the beginning of January for seven day moving averages. And this week, and we're now that we're into June are almost in line with our 2019 numbers. As far as showings, as far as showings go. Yep. Very nice. So okay. weekly showings on a seven day period through June tenth are, you know, a couple of percentage points off in Nevada. Now and we're still restricted. Is we're still Vegas. restricted. Yeah, exactly. Open houses aren't back yet. Tenant showings. Yeah. And uh, you know, some other states, interestingly enough, are not um are actually above their nine pre-19, their uh, 2019 numbers, but it's good to see us, you know, you know as well as I do, Colleen, you, you've been, you were through the the Great Recession. All, all, all eyes, when it comes to housing, there is one per, there's one group they look at. They look at over and they're looking at Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Is always on the radar screen. What's going on with Las Vegas housing? For better or worse. If we're not one, we're two, and if we're three, I'm surprised. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or That's we're last. Just... Or one's one. Hey, when do we but go last? But I mean, the, right, the one that they're looking at first, though. I mean, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like we seem to be the one that they focus. So, yes, we're always on the radar. Absolutely. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, for the longest time, you know, Las Vegas, wouldn't say poster child, but let's say the shining symbol of, of development and construction. Then the Great Recession hits, and now, then we move to the – to the opposite direction of okay, the uh, the example of of overbuild and bad credit, and I think there's still a lot of lot of memories and hangovers from that still. But if you look at demand and look at those items going on, you know I think I I, I like to use the old adage: rumors or demise are greatly exaggerated. Exactly. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that. It kind of reminds me of we had a, a, our virus was a bubble and it, we, that was our, that was our deal. Do you know what I mean? It was, we were, we bubbled and you could see the damage that the bubble did right. when 2008 hit, but we've come back and people want to be here. Yep. It's, it's very, very interesting. I mean, our, no, we'll talk about it, but I, I'm watching the Airbnbs. I'm watching uh, the, just the movement, what, yes. what's going on. Airbnb couldn't keep up with the amount of people that want to come here. Nope. And we're still looking at people that want to move here from another segment, multitudes of reasons. So um, 
it looks good. It, it, I mean, given the situation, it really does. Yeah, exactly. All things, all things being relative. And, you know, we printed out a couple of articles here. I know we, we typically like to get into more of a, um, you know, just kind of keep with the stats for the month. However, I think this is important news for people. This was from Housing Wire. Uh, one in 10 borrowers in forbearance is equity poor. One in 10. So, yeah. So it said the article gives an adept. This is from uh, June 8th from Housing Wire. About 9% of borrowers with forbearance. How am I pronouncing? Am I spelling bar borrowers? Borrowers. borrowers. There is that go. right? Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, yeah. With forbearance. People that have mortgages. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> About nine percent of people with with mortgages and forbearance. <laughs> Just the borrower. Borrower, yeah. borrower, right, right, right. Yeah, borrower. we know what you mean. Have It'd less be... than ten percent equity, and one percent are underwater, making up that ten percent. That's oh, wow. according to uh, Black Knight uh, research. So that means that the other nine and ten borrowers. <laughs> in forbearance have ec equity. So basically almost eight, a little over 80% or roughly 80% of homeowners in forbearance have 20% or more of equity, which indicates they likely won't end up in foreclosure. And I like that number. I was expecting it to be a lot uh, to the negative more. Um, when you have 80% of people that have taken advantage of the forbearance or yep. needed it, you know, used it in one way or another, not being equity poor and not being in a place where that home's going to hit the market because the bank's taken it. Yep. Um, sure. Gives a lot more opportunity for people to, if they do become in a position where they need to, they can either hopefully add the money to the back of the loan or they can sell their house and still get some equity out of it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And still, and still be whole as far as hopefully credit, as far as it isn't going to be as, as devastating um, with those kind of numbers. And if they, if they, if they remain the same, it's a really good sign. Absolutely. Exactly. So, you know, saying, you know, 80%, you know, again, through Black Knight, um, they stated, you know, almost these people having 20% or more equity won't likely be in foreclosure. They're saying people who have skin in the game are less likely to let their mortgages go into foreclosure. I mean, that's leaving, that is truly leaving money on the table. Well, and, and you have more opportunities to make sure you don't have to leave any money on the table. Yep. Think about it. If you have some equity and your credit doesn't go bad, there possibly could be an opportunity for you to refi it or to wrap the amount that you're in forbearance into the loan or who knows how creative it's going to get. But banks shouldn't have a problem with, if you have the equity, allowing you to put that money into the amount that's owed to the bank. Absolutely, exactly. And they, they said that during the financial crisis back in the 08, 09, 10 period, people who had little or no equity gave up and let the lenders seize their homes. They, they just walked walked away. And, you know, so if you look at it saying 80% roughly have 20% or more equity, and then you've got 9% have, they're stating have, typically enough to cover the cost of the sale of the property. So again, most of those that are in that equity poor forbearance situation and forbearance situation have enough if they need to sell their property and get out from under it mm -hmm. with only 1% underwater on their mortgages. And 1% for better or worse is roughly what we normally see with houses and short sales and foreclosures. It's not a big jump. There's no big, um, bump in the road there. Yep. So, uh, it, it all are all, all signs point to so far we're, we're doing well. Now they are, they are noting, you know, for better or worse too, in, in this article is that we see the share of low and negative equity borrowers in forbearance much higher amongst FHA and VA loans. This segment, which has the highest forbearance rates overall too, sees 19% of homeowners holding less than 20% of equity in their homes. Now, that's mostly due to low, low, zero, minimal to zero, you know, low down payment situations. I'd be curious to see the dates of purchase on those as well. Yep. 
those could be within the last three years. And when you put zero to three percent down on something, you you haven't invested, so the equity has to build through time. Absolutely, absolutely. And so um, that's that was a an interesting sign uh, to uh, to note here as, as to you know how much forbearance is is impacting real estate now there's definitely a lot of other factors here colleen but you know let's let's kind of talk about what what are we thinking june might what's your feelings on june and july best time ever if you're going to sell okay um it always is i mean that's that's a really good time secondarily if you're if you're even thinking about making a move um though it with the interest rates it's really the best time to sell and, and a great time to buy yes opinion mine which you know i have those um but the, my my gut feeling you know if it's a family member i'm talking to or, or advising just june and july i think we're going to see an uptick again i don't think we're going to see any downward trend so you're going to see the seller's market because i also believe here we come again that there's going to be more desire to move here yes there's going yes. to be more desire for people to um uh, relocate whether it's here or from somewhere else to here because we have so much to offer in the in and, and it's because we're not crowded because we have larger uh, areas in the home because of the change where people are working from I mean there's so many factors that that's a whole nother show but yep. to answer that question I think June and July are, are a really good time if somebody wants to get something done to do it absolutely I think I think you're right I mean number one again we don't have a lot of inventory coming online we are in a period right now where we're in the typically our summer months. You know, there's some talk of that that our current summer may be part of our original spring selling season because people may want to move or get into place, especially with if schools return and and you were returning to people their kids back in school. So again, there's that need to be in position to be in the school district you want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, you want a house that you can have enough space because there's online learning is a big deal now too and it, yep, it's exactly. been around but it's 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 taking some it's it's taking some growth on that too so absolutely and we may see like a hybrid like you said because maybe with uh coronavirus covid 19 there may not be the, the schools may not be back at full population capacity and they may be having to do periods where you're doing at home study versus in class study yeah, I'd love for us to do a segment on that particular market because I've been speaking with people in, in other states as well as here on um, some teachers I know that are no longer working for the district. They're working for companies that do online yep. schools. So so, so we've, we've, we've got low lower inventory than we typically should this time of the year. Yes. We have demand picking back up mostly due to low interest rates. Now we are also seeing unemployment starting to tick downwards too. There was another article and I want to get into this maybe either uh, probably next week. Again, a little bit more about, okay, what's going on with some of the forbearance numbers. Uh, Fannie and Freddie um, were testifying before Congress and they actually said that the forbearance numbers have now peaked and that there, there's as many houses going into forbearance as there are going out. So okay. we're starting to see people as they go back to work or get reaffordable or something, be able to pay for their houses. So hopefully we'll, you know, hopefully that starts becoming a downward trend. Yeah. If it, if, if again, if it's not going up and it's doing this, that's a good sign. Yep. Um, and, and, and a question for you. Yes. When you said the numbers that we have on the market right now, your opinion on what those numbers are going to do for June and July? Um, I probably see us going, you know, with the current trend line on with, with rates, I probably see, you know, under contracts, which were in the 3,200 range, probably going into maybe 36, 3,700 okay. homes, um, maybe for a little bit. Now there may be a, it'll be interesting to see if there's that, Typical July period where people like, okay, I'm out of here. It's hot. Yeah, that's motorhomes, but yeah, they they may have hit the road. <laughs> they may have hit the road. So, you know, because there's that period of time where we kind of check out. Yeah. Now, if does that happen again? 
or it's like you know what hey that demand is still spiking so that may bring you know we may see you know i, I don't know if i see us going past 3600 um okay. what about listings but listings i i'm a little concerned we may because the week over week demand may bring listings down into the um to the to the low to the low to mid 5000 range versus okay. like 58 5900 so again i always joke about it. remember remember in ghostbusters they said don't cross the streams yeah, so yeah. If we're seeing yeah. in in uh contract going this way and we're seeing available inventory going that way and while we may not be crossing the streams right there that starts getting into an interesting situation with regards to pricing Correct. I agree. I agree. Um, and also selection of homes, because if you don't have enough selection of homes, you've got multiple offers coming in. Great. But people aren't finding a house they can move into and close on. So you, right. you're you kind of starving the engine. Yeah. But ha I think we've seen an uptick. I know we have as as our group in people that are saying, you know what, I want to I want to put my house on the market and look for another one. or I want to put my house on the market and move or I want to put, you know, whatever the reason is, there's people we're, we're, we're hearing a lot of, yeah, I think it's time. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm okay with this. So it, it, I, I'm curious to see what happens with the amount of inventory in the next 30 to 60 days. Absolutely. And uh, just on a, a note, uh, as we talked about, I was catching up with a couple of realtors yesterday. We met over at the Red Rock uh, for a Wednesday night. I was surprised even after reopening how many people were on the, the casino floor, uh, the, the number of cars in the parking lot, number of people in the restaurant, in the pool, out on the patio mm -hmm. for, for a Wednesday night. Um, you know, I, don't, I, I, I can't answer as to what, what capacity or numbers they are, but when you're seeing these amount of people out and about, while we're still kind of in this phase two period of COVID reopening, it, it suggests that there is a level of demand out there to get get back and get going again. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, you look at the traffic. Yes. Traffic. Exactly. Just look at the traffic. <laughs> the grocery store is a nightmare. Right. Well, Good news is we other. have toilet paper now we can get. No, we do. We have, we pretty much, the only thing I can't find, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I think that we've we've done weathered this storm quite well. I guess would be the thus far. Yeah, I think over, over overall in in uh, pretty good shape. And so, with that in mind, any other notes or things on on May that we want to touch base on, Colleen? Or do you feel like okay, we've kind of covered the stats? We've covered the stats. There's so many things that we could sit here and, and chat about, and there's things I would love to get out there. So that's a couple of next shows as far as um, absolutely not numbers related, but they are related to the numbers. Yeah. So, you know how I talk. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, how I pronounce borrowers. Well, so, that was fun. Anyway. <laughs> so, you know, the good news is, is, you know, again, we've got a listing coming online uh, later today. We've got a, we've got a couple of potential client meetings. So again, if, if uh, we're, we're meeting with those people, like you said, who are thinking about selling because they want to take it, they take the opportune time, with the demand that there is, uh, they're, they're leveraging that. They also, too, a lot of these are single-family, you know, great family homes. So people that are needing to buy into a family home in advance of the changing school year, you know, those are great opportunities. So, Colleen, uh, thanks for being here with the uh, May recap for numbers. This was fun. Thanks, Appreciate Don. it. And uh, what are, are you, you got a little coffee going here this morning? I do, just a plain old plain old. Just to okay. get your morning going. There you go. There you go. Well, thanks, everybody. On behalf of Colleen Schaefer, I'm Don Kramer. We make up the Kramer Group at Urban Nest Realty. We're more now than ever, your real estate experience matters. So reach out to Colleen or reach out to myself if you have any questions about buying, selling, or investing in Las Vegas real estate. Have a great day. Thanks. Take care. And we'll see you all the next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.